Hi everyone. I've had a number of requests to make a video recommending some short books that I really love, so I thought I would make that video today and recommend um, six short books uh, that I feel really passionate about and that have really stuck with me. And uh, everyone defines a short book in a different way, I guess, but uh, most people define it as a book that's under 150 pages long, uh, so you could call it a novella or you could call it a long short story. Story, but basically it's a it's a story that you can read um, over the course of a morning and an afternoon um, if you have a if you have a day off and uh, just want to experience a story in one big gulp which um, I think is a really rare and good experience because obviously with a, a long novel you can't do that you have to break it up over a number of days or weeks or even months and uh, and so your experience of it is really different um, but these I, I think uh, make a really big impact and there's something so special about being able to consume them all at once. And I think there's um, something really skillful that all the writers do in all these different books, um, which leaves a really lasting impression of the story, because obviously if you don't have that many pages, you don't have that long to develop your characters and give a real sense of their whole psychology and sense of place and all of that stuff that, that goes into fiction. Um, but these writers do it really well, so I'd, I'd really recommend these. Um, so the first one I want to recommend is Mrs. Caliban by Rachel Ingalls. And this is a writer um, who died last year, sadly, and um, but who isn't a very well-known writer because she always shied away from publicity. And she said once in a rare interview um, that she, she's always shied away from publicity or talking about her books publicly because she didn't want to be seen as uh, the new arrival in the zoo. Um, so uh, so that was her sort of attitude um, towards being a public uh, literary figure. Um, but uh, Mrs. Ingalls was first published in 1983. Three, I think, and ever since um, it was first published, it sort of has enjoyed uh, bouts of sort of being forgotten and then rediscovered and then sort of forgotten again and then rediscovered. So it's something of like a cult classic, I think. And, uh, and the story involves a housewife, a suburban housewife named Dorothy, who takes into her, her home a uh, sea creature named Larry, uh, who has a taste for avocados. And Larry has escaped from a center for oceanic research where he was being experimented upon. And so she takes him into her home and hides him there. And then they develop a emotional and sexual relationship with each other. So it's quite a wild story. Um, but there, there's a real like tender quality to it and this this beautiful sense of someone who's discovering things about themselves and hidden desires within themselves that they didn't ever realize were, were there. Um, so, so I just adore this novella. Next is We the Animals by Justin Torres. And this was first published in 2011. And the story concerns um, three brothers, three young brothers who are growing up in a household in upstate New York, uh, where their their father is of Puerto Rican um, descent and, and their mother is white. And they have a very passionate but very tumultuous relationship with each other. So the, the father is often uh, prone to bouts of uh, dangerous anger and the, the mother is prone to bouts of depression. So it's a very tumultuous and volatile um, relationship. Um, and the, the brothers sort of experience this. And I've never read a narrative where you get such a strong sense of a collective group of people. So these three brothers sort of do lots of things together and have similar outlooks and uh, feelings about the world. But then gradually as they get older, um, one of the brothers sort of breaks off and discovers his own desires and and passion and motivations and and how it goes from that sense of the collective to the individual I think is so 
powerful and and moving. Blackwater by Joyce Carol Oates. Uh, so this is a novella uh, which was based on a famous historical incident um, known as Chappaquiddick, the Chappaquiddick incident in um, 1969, where Senator Ted Kennedy uh, left a party very late one evening and was driving with a young woman um, named Mary Jo. And uh, while they were driving, um, he his car went off the road into a body of water and Ted Kennedy managed to uh, get out of the car and uh, escape the incident um, but he left there Mary Jo within the car and she drowned and he didn't report this accident at first he just left the the scene of the crime and um, didn't report it until the next day so it was a huge scandal at the time and so this novel is a fictionalization of that incident um, it doesn't use the real names of these historical people um, but um, makes up a story around that and follows the perspective of the young woman who is trapped in this car and slowly drowning and as she is dying um, she has flashes uh, remembering the incidents of her life that that led up um, to this evening and uh, and it's so powerful how it it captures her her own personal sense of history but also this wider sense of history of how men in positions of great power uh, can take advantage of young women and get away with this. So it's a novella that's really atmospheric and beautifully told but also has a really powerful political message at its center. The Seamstress and the Wind by Caesar Era. Uh, this is a real wild card because um, it's quite a surreal crazy novel. So Caesar Era uh, is an Argentinian author and this was first published in 1994 uh, but it was only first translated into English in 2011. And, uh, and he's a very prolific author. Um, he's published at least over 80 books and, um, and they're, they're all quite short and, uh, and sort of surreal in tone. So uh, the story is about a, a seamstress named Delia um, who's creating a wedding dress and she gets this feeling one day that her son has been kidnapped. So she goes um, on this car journey um, to try to recover him. And uh, when she leaves, her husband, Ramon, who's a gambler, um, he uh, chases after her in another car. But then chasing him is a mysterious figure in a little blue car. And chasing after that little blue car is a uh, gust of wind, um, which has a name and a personality um, and is carrying a wedding dress. And so um, it's sort of this madcap chase uh, across the country um, but um, it's it's also this very odd sort of uh, Alice in Wonderland style adventure um, where uh, the, the, it's very episodic and um, all sorts of strange things happen and occur and it's uh, it's just I, I think it's just a sort of wild ride that you have to go along with and I just sort of enjoyed it as a story that's completely disconnected from history but uh, enters into this whole crazy dreamland landscape. The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. Um, so in contrast to, to this novel, which is very surreal, um, this, this novel is very realistic. Um, so it follows the journey of an old man, as you may guess, um, who's a fisherman in his 80s, um, who has very bad luck as a fisherman. And he sets out on, on a journey um, to, to go fishing and uh, catches a marlin, um, which he is determined to pull in no matter what the cost and the way Hemingway writes this book it's so vivid I mean I feel like I read it a long time ago but I feel like I can still taste the the salty sea air and feel the calluses on his hands as he's struggling to to pull in this giant fish and it's just this epic tale condensed into this very like small story of a, an old man on a fishing boat uh, that represents this great like battle between uh, man and nature and all these like grand themes but condensed down into this this very realistic and touching story. And finally I want to recommend a novella that I read recently uh, which is Love by Hanna Orstevik. Um, so this is uh, was first published in 1997 but it was only 
uh, first translated into English from the Norwegian in 2018. And it's a, the, the story is a, a dual narrative between a mother and her adolescent son um, who has just had a birthday and he's expecting his mother to bake him a cake. But instead of his mother doing that, she sort of sets off on this journey, this lonely journey by herself at night um, where she meets a man at an amusement park and they, they go off on a journey together. And the son at the same time goes off on his own journey and meets a number of people over the course of this night. And uh, the entire novel has this real suspenseful quality to it um, where you had this foreboding sense that, that something really bad is, is going to happen. And at the end of the novella, indeed, something really bad does happen. But the way it keeps the suspense throughout the, the story is so powerfully done. And uh, But it's also really moving and touching how uh, the feelings of isolation and loneliness that both the mother and the son feel as they're trying to make these connections with other people. And all the time you're wondering, why do they have this disconnect with each other? I mean, they should be with each other um, at home on the, the eve of this boy's birthday. Day. Um, but instead, they're, they're just going off on their own journeys. And they themselves don't seem to know why they're doing this or have the motivation for doing this. And so it's it's really delicately and beautifully done, um, as well as being really tense and atmospheric um, in the, the tone of the story. Uh, so those are all the books I want to recommend. Um, let me know if, if you've read any of these, um, what you think of them, or if you have uh, recommended recommendations yourself for really powerful uh, short books um, that you've really loved. Uh, let me know about those in the comments below. Uh, but thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you're reading good things and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye everyone.